From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Oh, what a program God has laid upon Jack's heart today. And it has to do with uh, what 2016 will hold for us. What does the future hold for us? Let's take a sort of peer into the future today, if you will. First of all, stand firm against the gathering darkness. That's my first headline. We do need to be standing firm and stand up against some of the things that are happening in the world. And then secondly, Franklin Graham on the Wheaton Row, Muslims and Christians do not worship the same God. He is speaking up and he is standing firm. Going on, 2015 saw the most violent persecution of Christians in modern history, all of history. My, oh, my, here in the United States and up in Canada, we don't often think about those in the rest of the world, but in modern history. I just want to say, friends, that we have spoken about this, about the Christians around the world, and it moves my heart so very much to think about their being killed everywhere, everywhere. And there are those who are speaking up and standing firm about it. Now, someone that has written about this is uh, Erwin Lutzer. We did interview him while Jack was gone, and what a wonderful Bible teacher he is. And this I like. Stand firm against the gathering darkness. He has to do with what happened over in Germany during Hitler's regime. He said that if they had stood firm, it wouldn't have gone as far as it did. Take a look at this, please. This is from the book. When God calls a man, he bids him come and die, wrote Dietrich Bonhoeffer during the dark days when the church in Germany was being Nazified. And at the age of what? 39, he practiced what he preached. He was hanged on the gallows and died. He was willing to die for what was right, and he said, I will stand up for what is right. And uh, I believe that we're coming to that. We need to stand up and do what's right. And God did bring Jack back to stand up against what's happening. And Jack, that's what you've been doing. Oh, Rexel, I'll tell you. After coming home from that hospital, I was so weak, I thought, it's finished. I couldn't even recall one Bible verse. And then four weeks later, the Lord came on me. And I heard about these signs that the Muslims have put up in 134 cities, that the Jesus of the Quran and the Jesus of the Bible are one and the same. That is untrue. That is a lie. That is deception. And in Islam, if you say taqiyya, Everything you say is forgiven, even though it was a lie and deceit, as long as it promoted their religion. Now, I would never destroy your book. You call it the Holy Quran. And this is my Holy Bible, and you say they're the same. You know better than that. Everything Moses taught is not what's in this Bible, according to to what's in your Quran. Everything Abraham taught is not in this Bible according to what you taught in your Quran. Everything about Jesus, 1,200 verses, is not in your Quran. All you have is negative against my Jesus. Now, I don't want to speak against your book or your leaders, but I'm going to defend my Jesus, whatever it costs me. I'm not going to let you get away with saying the Jesus of the Quran and the Jesus of the Bible are the same. It's the biggest lie ever perpetrated on Christianity in America, and you're going to hear about it today. Oh, Jack, I'm so happy we're going to hear because he's doing what Dr. Lutzer said in that article. He is standing up against the darkness, against the wickedness out there. Jack, what do you think about that article? I go by this book, wonderful, and he and I think alike. Ezekiel 33.3, blow the trumpet and warn my people. Isaiah 58.1, 
Bible says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. What for? To warn God's people. And I'm talking to some of you Christians today. You call yourselves evangelical, but that's not enough. You've got to be a fundamentalist evangelical where you believe in the five fundamentals of the faith. And by the way, next week, you're going to hear the most shocking truth you've ever heard. All five of the fundamentals are predicted in the Old Testament, Judaism, and fulfilled in the new. What are the five things? If you don't believe these, I don't care who you are. You are not a Christian. The deity of Christ that he's God, the virgin birth, the blood atonement, the bodily resurrection, and his coming again. That is fundamentalist Christianity. That's the one that was formed in 1925 by Christian ministers of America, said you must believe those five. And if you had those five, we wouldn't have a woman that... Wheaton College saying Allah is our God. You wouldn't have Rick Warren saying Allah is our God. You wouldn't have Cardinal Dolan saying Allah is our God at a Muslim convention in Albania. God help us. And you wouldn't have guys like Wycliffe who took Jesus out of the Bible 91 times because they said that offends Muslims. They don't believe he's the son of God. In fact, Allah says, if you believe that Jesus is the son of God, you'll burn in hell forever. Oh, isn't that something? Does that sound like your Bible? It isn't. The Bible says in 1 John 2, whoever says that Jesus is not the son of God is an antichrist. You say, how can I know that what you're saying is true? Surah 4, 5, 6, 9, 13, 17, 33, and 88, eight different times. Allah says, hellfire forever. If you say Jesus is the Son of God, I could show you hundreds of times where Jesus is the Son of God. So it isn't in your Quran. Don't say the Quran and the Bible are the same. Takia, the word you guys use when you lie and you can cover up for it. Very good point there, Jack. Very, very good. Now let's see if uh, it's our generation that is really the first ones to stand up against uh, what's happening. Here you see in 1938-something, Hillel Belloc in 1938, Islam the most formidable and persistent enemy of Western civilization. He's a gentleman standing in the middle there stating that. Well, we know, of course, about this gentleman. We have quoted him many times. Church of War, no stronger retrograde force exists in the world than Islam. Now, Jack, here's some men standing up way back in 1938 against what was happening back then. But we're seeing it more on a worldwide global spectrum, aren't we? Oh, Rexella, I can't believe what I'm about to say. Hitler kills six million Jews, a terrible thing. And Chamberlain was the one who went to be with Hitler. He came back and said to Churchill, oh, he loves the English people. He's never going to hurt us. You know the rest of the story. Millions died. But I'm going to tell you something. Not only did he kill six million Jews, Hundreds of thousands of people, 50 million died during that war because of Adolf Schickel Gruber Hitler. And I want to give you a figure here. Here is a book by this man, Mark Gabriel, who went to the great Muslim university in Egypt. And he said, since the Crusades, Islam has killed 300 million apostates the road and Christians. Now, let me give you what that means. We are in 50 states. ISIS is in all of them, and they're getting ready. The Brotherhood has been here since 1928. They're the worst murderers in history. Even a sissy of Egypt put them in prison because of the trouble they were doing there. They have been getting ready for over 87 years for the big attack on America. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. And ISIS is in all 50 states, six million times 50. If six million were killed in each state, it would only be what Islam has done, mainly to Christians. I'm gonna show you something a little later. 
you know, Jack, we're talking about what Hitler did, and it was to the Jews, you know. But let me just say that God has a special love for Jews. In fact, uh, the Old Testament teaches that he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But in Genesis 32, 28, he changed the word Jacob, that wonderful man of God. He changed his name to Israel. I want you to take a look, please, at this verse of Scripture. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. So God has a very, very special love for Israel. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, not, oh, not Jacob now, but Israel. He changed his name to Israel. Jack, the Lord really has a very special love for the Jewish people, doesn't oh, he? Hey, it appears scores of times throughout the Old Testament, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. He changed the name. And he says he is the God of Israel, not of Ishmael, the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, but through the Virgin Mary. Now, you know, Jack has been talking about the difference of the two Jesuses, the one in the Quran, the one in the Bible. Jack, you want to refer to that again, please? Yes. Next week, I'm going to show you the five points of fundamentalism. If we were still making our colleges carry these five things and our churches that preach Christianity like Warren's church who's going that way saying that Allah could be our God. Listen, this is what they teach about Jesus and I'm going to prove it from the Quran, proving that the Quran is not like our Bible. First of all, they say Jesus is not the Son of God. If you believe it, you'll burn in hell forever. I covered that already. We don't believe in the Trinity. It doesn't matter that Matthew 28 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. They don't believe it. Jesus comes back and says, i got to tell you something. I am not a deity. I'm not the Son of God. I lied to you. I did not die on the cross. In fact, I want you to know that I was not resurrected from the dead on the third day. These are all stories, and I've carried them. And now, since I left, I've become a Muslim evangelist for Allah. I've been converted. Oh, Imagine! Oh. Makes me mad. Be angry and sin not, the Bible says. And I am. And then he says, and this is through Kabani, and he is the great leader of Islam in this country where Rick Warren preached twice at Muslim conventions. And he said, we're going to take over the world. And Jesus, our prophet, not our God, our prophet's coming back. And he is going to be the executioner of every Jew, every Christian, every man in any other religion. Executioner, millions are going to die. You say, oh, come on now, Vanity. Wait a minute. I've memorized 300 of the surahs. That's Surah 4, 145 to 47, 172 to 73, chapter 5, verses 72, 73, chapter 6, verse 19, chapter 9, verse 30, and chapter 19, verses 33 and 88. What blasphemy! Oh, what blasphemy indeed. Well, we all know that Islam and Christianity do not worship the same God, and we do not have the same Jesus. The name, yeah, but not the same Jesus. Well, something's going on at Wheaton College, Franklin Graham, on the Wheaton Row. Muslims and Christians do not worship the same God. By the way, did you know that Billy Graham, his father attended Wheaton College? And his mother also, he's heartbroken. Well, here's the one who is causing the problem a fight for the future of evangelical Christianity. Well, she's saying we worship the same God. Oh, my word, can you go on? Here you see him, Rick Warren. We all know who he is. And he also has signed a covenant saying that uh, Jehovah and Allah are the same. Same God. Oh, Rick, why have you done this? And then going on here again, Muhammad 
uh, Hashim Kabani. Jack, do you want to see what this man has to say about our Jesus? He's one of the leaders in this country for Islam, and he's had Rick Warren preach at the Muslim conventions twice. And he said, we're going to take over the world, and Jesus is coming back as our prophet. Don't believe he's a deity. And he is going to be the executioner of every Jew, every Christian, and every non-Muslim. That's what they're teaching. Let's go on, Rex. All right, yes, I'm going to go on with something that really shocked me. It was the Catholic Muslim Faith Alliance, and this is what they had to say. It's New York, Timothy Cardinal Dolan. Well, I'm not going to take time to read all of this, but look down at the bottom, if you will. Cardinal Dolan told his Islamic audience, you love God, we love God, and he is the same God. Oh. Then going on, Wycliffe defends changing titles for God, and of course, they change baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to cleanse them by the water in the name of Allah, his Messiah, and his Holy Spirit. Wycliffe and Sill acknowledging, backing translation work that didn't render Son of God and God the Father literally. I don't know about you, but certainly my mind is boggled to think that there are Christians, multitudes of them, leaders who are willing to change the God that we've always known, Jehovah, to Allah, and that Jesus is not the Son of God. That breaks my heart. Why are they willing to do that, Jack? And they call themselves many evangelicals. You're not a true believer unless you're a fundamentalist evangelical. And next week, you'll know what that is when we give the five fundamentals of the faith. And without those five, you're not a Christian. I don't care what label you use. Now, Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, and 24, Jesus said there should be false Christ and false prophets. It's arrived, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. Matthew, again, chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Many will say in that day, judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name have done many wonderful works. Then will I, Jesus, profess and say, I never knew you, you that work in equity. You don't have it. You have a head knowledge, and that's all. Listen to this. In 2 Timothy 3.13, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Peter 2.1, there were false prophets among the people, as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately, secretly shall bring in damnable heresies. Hey, listen, Wycliffe, even denying Jesus who bought them. And you Christians say, oh, let's get all of our religions together. Let's meet for prayer meetings. Wrong! Second John 1, 9, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ does not have the Father. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine of Christ, don't even receive him into your house, let alone fellowship with him. Though the word of God is very much against it all. And he says, if you say, God bless you to them, you're a partaker of their evil deeds. Oh, but Brother Van Amphi, Jesus wouldn't talk that way, wouldn't he? Listen to what he said about the religionists of his day that were against the truth like the Muslims are, lying about everything. He said, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one convert. And when he's made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. Wow. Verse 33, you bunch of snakes, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? That's Jesus. Now I close with this one as far as these verses are concerned. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 18. You better listen. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with the devil? What part is he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God, the Christian bodies, with the temple of vital Satan's people who are filled and possessed with demonic spirits? Wherefore, wherefore, come out from among them and be separate. Don't touch them. 
and I'll be a father and God unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Jack, thank you for giving us the Bible and what God has to say. Now, up front, remember I said what happened to those who stand firm against the gathering darkness? Take a look at what they're doing to those who are standing firm. All right, here's a report. 2015 saw most violent persecution of Christians in modern history. It's worldwide. Now, I want you, please, to take a look at what Jack has here. He gathered some of the materials at home. Would you mind holding those up, Jack? You heard me say in the past few months since I've been back that there are over 200. I just got this, 600 areas in 24 months where they slaughtered Christians by the tens of thousands. Look at it. God help them, God forgive them. You know, friends, how good it is to know that they are with the Lord. This is true salvation, and that they know what it's all about. If they have been Christians and gave their lives for the Lord, they get the martyr's crown. How wonderful it is to say, Lord, I believe I will stand for you. And uh, one, some of you are perhaps saying, will the Lord come into my life? Will he change my life? He will, if only you'll ask him to be your Savior. You got a problem? The Lord will take it away. He'll cleanse you because He is the Savior of the world. Jack, will you pray this prayer of acceptance? I'm talking to you Muslims now. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. Your own Quran says that Jesus is going to kill anyone who believes that He is the Son of God. Uh-uh. This Jesus is the Son of God. And this Son of God loves you. And John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that as whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Good enough, huh? He says, I'll forgive you for your hatred of me. But now I died on the cross for you. Will you pray this, Lord Jesus? For once I believe in you. I have been against you. I've listened to religion. Not to you, Jesus, not to the Trinity, not to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now I believe, whoever you are, atheist, whoever you are, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Save me now. Come in the heart, and I love you, Jesus, for dying for me. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Isn't it wonderful to know that the blood of Christ will cleanse anybody if they only ask? I don't care if you're who you are, what's in your life. He just forgave you if you prayed that prayer. So write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. The Lord will walk with you every single day of your life. How good it is to be a child of God because of the Son. Of God. You know, friends, I meant what I said a few moments ago. I trust that many of you, if you hadn't accepted the Lord, that you did, and I would love to hear from you. But we wanted you to see this program once again because of the confusion out there. So many people are saying that Jesus is just a prophet. They're not saying who he really is. And so we were going to bring also this wonderful, wonderful video back again, Who is Jesus? Jack, you want this to be sent around the world, don't you? I told my board members and agents, anything happens to me because of the threats. I want this in every nation on earth where there are Muslims living because this is the way they hate Jesus in Islam. And they said, if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you'll burn in hell forever, plus other distorted facts about my Jesus. Get it. Oh, Jack, I thank the Lord so much for your burden to go around the world with this message, who is Jesus? We want them to have the truth, don't we? All right, friends, we want you to take a look, please, at the promo. America and Canada beware. Doctors Jack and Rex Sullivan be warned about Muslim terrorist organizations who are planning attacks in America and Canada in 2016 and 17. 
Bloody ISIS murderers already claimed to be in all 50 states and much of Canada. The greatest heartbreak to believers is the blasphemy against our God and Savior Jesus by the Islamic religion. To them, he is not the Son of God nor the Savior of the world, but instead the executioner of all Jews, Christians, and non-Muslims. For details, order the most dynamic video study the Vanapies have ever released. Who is Jesus? This video indicates we undoubtedly are the rapture generation. Friends, there's the 800 number and there's the address. And wonderful, my gift, Great Salvation Themes, a wonderful book by Jack, when you call. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Who is Jesus? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And remember, I have a gift for you when you call for the wonderful, wonderful video, Who is Jesus? If ever we needed to know, we need to know today. There's the 800 number and there's the address, so please make the call right away. You know, friends, I just want to say that Jack and I have had such a burden on our hearts, haven't we, Jack, to get the real message around the world. And I want to tell you why. We don't change the message of who Jesus is. The message changes us. When you open your heart to the Lord, how wonderful it is that we can have a new life in Him. And this is one thing that I would like for you to pray for us about. And that is that we'll be able to continue to get this wonderful message everywhere in the world. We now reach 247 countries. We've heard from all of them. So many of them are being persecuted right now and say, if you can't come to us, I don't know what we would do. So please pray that God will continue to bless us as we continue to get this message around the world. Who is Jesus? And we all know that ISM is trying to give the false message around the world, saying that he's not the Son of God. And if you believe that he is the Son of God, you will burn in hell forever. You know, the other day talking to somebody, they said, oh, well, you know, they're good people. There are many good Muslims in the world, but they do not have the right message. And so many of them don't know the right message. And so pray, if you will, that we can get who is Jesus around the world. That's why. So pray with us, will you? Put us on your prayer list that every day God will use this program to reach millions of people in 247 countries. Now, we're going to look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. Oh, yes, he does. And so do we, so very, very much. Bye-bye.